This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Doopie doopie doo, doopie doopie doo doo. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. It has been some time. As you will see, the studio is starting to take shape a little bit more. Got some lights going on. Got some cool backlighting for the guitars. Went with blue today. And then look at this. This is what my videos used to look like. Like this, you know, me not understanding anything about lighting. I still don't know anything about lighting, but, oh, hi. I think that looks a bit better. Um, lots of things still going on. Still working on the debut album. To be honest, I've got one track down so far. I've got all the tracks written, but the demos are, uh, are happening slowly because moving, renovating um, my, my new living space and just we're still in lockdown here. So things are still just sort of taking some time. Um, but I did ask my patrons for a few questions. So we're gonna head over to questions of the day. Sin asks three tips for lyric writing. Number one, I would say write about your own experience. Don't get too, um, don't get too far away from what happened to you. Don't feel like you have to mask it all that much. Just be open, honest, and vulnerable. Then no matter how focused it is and no matter how unique you think the experience is to you, it will end up resonating with more people rather than if you're trying to appeal to loads of people, then it will appeal to no one. So write about what you know, write about your own experience. That is tip one, I promise. Tip two is use a thesaurus. I use a thesaurus all the time. Just, you know, have it up on Google or whatever. And um, every time there is, there is a word I want to use, but it just doesn't fit, then yeah, use a thesaurus. And then three, don't feel like you have to write in a specific way. So with lyrics, I always think it's best to be playing the guitar for me. This is for me. Play the guitar. I, I play the guitar and sing gibberish. And that's usually when I find the things that fit best. And so I record voice memos on my phone and I capture that delivery of whatever gibberish comes out of my mouth or whatever idea comes out of my mouth. And then I can sort of backtrack from that. So I sort of improvise and just make up silliness rather than sitting there thinking, right, I need to write a poem right now and it all needs to work and then I'll set it to music because songwriting is different to poetry. You are fitting it to music, so it has to work with the music. And, you know, there are, there are little rules that you have to follow. So, you know, make sure it rhymes, make sure it's satisfying for people to listen to and sing along to and make sure it's a catchy lyric, not just a melody. So there we go. There are my three quick tips for lyric writing. Paul asks, what tunes would you teach young beginners around 12 years old? I learnt around 11, 12, 13, and I don't think you could have told me what to play. I think there were songs that I was listening to that were popular among my friends that I just had to learn, that other kids were learning. So. I would always be a little bit tentative to force whatever your music taste is on the kid who's learning. Because really, the first question should be like, what songs are you listening to? What music do you love? I, you know, you can introduce them to some of the classics that maybe you think should be in their repertoire eventually. But just in, in that early early stage get something really really current that if they play it at school in front of their friends they're immediately going to get a pat on the back and that's what I had with Teenage Dirtbag by Wheatus, uh, Plug In Baby by Muse, um, Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson like these were all the first sort of songs um, I played that song 
uh, that Jack White and uh, Brendan Benson were in The Raconteurs. And whatever their debut single was, I learned that. Like, everything that was current, Red Hot Chili Peppers had just come out with... Ooh, which album? Which album? Was it By The Way? So, you know, like, great music, but not necessarily classic guitar tunes. They Some of them are now. But at the time, they were just really, really current. So I was just obsessed with learning them so that I could play them in front of my friends and then, you know, try and impress people. Um, so obviously you can teach them whatever you want to, um, as long as it's suitable for their skill set. But yeah, ask, ask them what, what they want to learn, what songs they love. And yeah, I hope that helps, Paul. I thought those were two really cool questions from my Patreon supporters. If you want to know any more, um, or if you if you want me to go into more detail on the topics of lyric writing or teaching beginners, then do let me know in the comments. Let me know exactly what you want uh, to learn or hear from me, and I will address that in a video later on. But now it is time for a guitar story. Mary Spender's guitar stories, six string tales of woe and glory. Send me your guitar stories, and I might choose to read your guitar stories. This story comes from Chris and is titled My Guitar Story with a Cat. So, obviously, guaranteed to be read. Hello, Mary. I love your channel and want to share my guitar story with you. My story starts in grade school where I learnt to play the cello. Unfortunately, after several years of playing, my family relocated to an area where there was no orchestra. While I tried to keep at it without a venue to play in, it wasn't long before my playing days were over. I later purchased a beautiful white 1980s Rickenbacker electric bass from a family friend, simply because I knew how to read bass clef music but the bass just didn't feel right to me, so eventually it was sold off. But the desire to play music never left, and after many years I decided to try the guitar. Not knowing if this would be the right instrument for me, I bought a used Fender Nashville Telecaster and started over as a beginning musician for the third time in my life. I've fallen in love with it and have accepted your challenge of practicing every day as we start this crazy new year. Yay! My guitar has changed a bit since it was acquired. It now has Fender's fourth generation noiseless Telecaster pickups. The neck is a 12 inch radius Telecaster deluxe neck with locking tuners, cool. And I love playing it. Since I live in an apartment and I don't want to disturb my neighbors or my wife, I usually play with headphones and my cat, Oreo, <laughs> That's a great name. It says the noise I make is beginning to resemble music. I want to thank you for producing your channel and to let you know that you have inspired this old beginner in the US to get back in the saddle and again, enjoy life learning and playing music. I hope you enjoy the pics. Chris and Oreo. Hey, nice telly. It looks great. Wow, Oreo. <laughs> Guys, this is just making me want a cat more and more. Brilliant, thank you so much, Chris. And Oreo. Oreo, keep up, uh, you know, be the motivator of the guitar practice. Un unlike my cats at, at home when I was growing up, they'd just slowly leave the room every time I picked up a guitar, but you know. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed that guitar story. Now it is time for Patreon of the day. So I'm gonna go to my random number generator, 394. Carl Mikkel Zetterling, you are my patron of the day. Thank you so much for your support. To everyone else, let me know how you're doing in the comments below. Just as a little update here in England, we are still in lockdown. So I have actually been delving in to today's sponsor quite a lot. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Skillshare. As I mentioned earlier, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives and curious people that features thousands of classes in music, productivity, illustration, marketing, and entrepreneurship. 
Most of the classes are under 60 minutes in length and are designed to fit any schedule. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. A Skillshare original I'm really impressed with comes from Holly Coley Murchison. If you need to watch something uplifting that will re-motivate you, then you should check out her class called Creating Your Dream Career uncover and apply your creative strengths. Holly's class has helped me realize I need to envision my future as I'm currently thinking very day to day. So definitely check it out, but don't forget that the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, but otherwise I'll be seeing you very soon.